Welcome to uh, number two of a series of energy market stocks. Uh, this time uh, we're talking to LNRG's trading director, Joseph Turai. Hi, Joseph. Hello, Patrick. Uh, hi, you're uh, live from your home office in Budapest, right? Yeah, it's almost the same everywhere. So there is not much difference from, from the developed part of Europe. <laughs> true, true. So, um, well, you're also still in lockdown. And how are you holding up? Actually, we are very lucky, Hungarians, because this is uh, not so strict lockdowns like anywhere else in the Western European countries. It's a kind of pseudo lockdowns. Mm -hmm. We strict hourly schedules. We can leave our homes, get shopping or doing the most elementary uh, things uh, to, to manage our things. Uh, uh, so we feel quite fortunate in yeah. Hungary. Uh, the situation is far from what we have been experiencing in Serbia or maybe in Belgium or in France or in Italy. Uh, so there is more freedom here but in, in the interpretation of the virus, but not in the interpretation of the politics. Yeah, yeah, true. That, well, good to hear. So, and, and the, but the trading you're doing from home, right? Uh, and yeah. The, the analysis and everything. Uh, honestly speaking, for the market analytics, market research, uh, you don't need to get into your office on a daily basis. You need a silence. You need calm garden view yeah. or yeah. sea view. Uh, and uh, honestly speaking, working from home uh, requires a completely different attitude from, any, uh, from, from all of us, or even short term, long term. I am also fortunate. Uh, because I've been working from home since 2017. I am also running an office, but um, you can counter-select your partners, you counter-select the occasions. So actually, I am already having my option. You're to used to it. And yeah. prepared for the new, new trading and computational world um, is waiting for us in maybe the next, next years, next decades. Okay. But, but you do many uh, deep uh, market uh, analysis and forecasts. Um, so I, I guess with these unprecedented uh, market disruptions, uh, the past few months must have been uh, quite insane for you. So can, can you share a little bit how this COVID crisis is impacting the, uh, the regional markets over there? Uh, def definitely, we were naively taught at the end of March or maybe in, during February, that uh, uh, working from home office is just a fun. Mm -hmm. uh, but honestly speaking, we, are, we have been working uh, a lot more hours. So actually we don't sleep. Everybody is very excited. Everybody is very stressed. The clients uh, want to know the quarterly prices, the calendar prices. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a lot of emotions in the air. Everybody is very clever guy to explain his or, his or her her own view, but the clients and the, and the partners want to know the exact price level. So, uh, because a lot of blah blahs, everyone is under interpreting things in A, B, C, D, bullish, bearish, bullish, bearish. From today's point of view, putting together all price drivers from EDFs, nuclear announcements via the CO2 regime, to, to the supply shortage of Belkane, uh, plus this horribly bad hydro situation. I think this is quite unique. 2020 is a unique year because of the virus, the economical consequences, and the hydro situation. A lot of bearish and very strong bullish factors. So you must differentiate. It's a really difficult task to, to, to predict the summer prices. Now everyone is focusing on the summer. Mm. More air conditioning mm. usage, less air conditioning usage. What's gonna happen to Montenegro, Croatia, the touristical center of Balkan? There are gonna be more tourists, less tourists. Uh, it is also valid for Turkey, for Greece, the Greek islands. Ho uh, actually, what we know for sure uh, that we have a complete shifting in 2020. We are shifting in the generation mix. We are shifting in the customer habits, 
customer attitudes, customer behavior, consumers behavior. We are also shifting uh, in the export import profile of the countries, traditional exporters transforming into importers like Romania, Ukraine. Uh, and also there is a shifting uh, in the liquidity. It's also a, a unique situation that no one is trading physical in the Balkan. Mm. The Balkan is, uh, has, been, has been a eternal physical trader, state-owned utilities, even we uh, traders. Now, man, I am not lying, 99% of the Q3, Q4, Q2 volumes are traded in the, uh, and, and uh, cleared in the, in the financial platforms. Mm. Uh, so it's also a unique situation, a lot of drawbacks and a lot of advantages to see uh, increased financial uh, volume. And uh, as well as I think that there is a big, big shift in the generation mix where the photovoltaics uh, evolution in Hungary, for instance, is unprecedented. Uh, the growth, the increment, the, the incrementum from 2019 to 2020. So probably a bad hydro year can be compensated by a very strong photovoltaic injection. So uh, there is at least four or five segments of the market. We, have, we are seeing a shift from uh, status E, from status uh, B. Another example, the Balkan is a traditional coal hydro switching potential, which is in Germany, the coal gas. It is in a coal yeah. hydro. Yeah. But the problem is, we don't have hydro. No, no. Nay, they're coal. Hmm. So what's now? We have a kind of shifting from coal hydro to photovoltaic and import. Mm -hmm. Because it's cheap. It's coming from the... Yeah. Prices are low now. So again, 2020, it's very challenging in chasing us to grab from a market analytics and research point of view, who is, who is giving you the best explanation, who is giving you the best prediction, the most accurate prediction for the, for the summer. Everyone is now focusing on the summer especially in light of the climate change, could be the hottest year and uh, there is no waters in the rivers. But about the nuclear generation in Hungary, in, in Romania, Bulgaria, on the other side, we have the, we have the demand side, which, uh, where we see uh, lots of thousands of megawatts uh, daily shrinking compared to the 2019 situation. Uh, I would say 50 50 person. Yeah, yeah. We see a bearish or bullish, bullish yeah. uh, scenario because uh, we should really uh, tell the truth that the power plants are not interested to work and run the generation on 10, 15, 20, 25 euros. This is not the level mm. anyone would be interested to operate the assets and they do everything legal, they do everything uh, uh, on a market fair basis to get the prices on an on a even level, on a, on, a, on a tolerable level, which is still interesting enough to generate power. The shifting of the maintenance of Chernaboda from spring to, to an unknown period in the second half of the year, EDF announcements, those are, I think, not uh, accidental coincidences. And this is, I am not the only one okay. who is saying yeah. that. Again, 25 euro a peu près is not comfortable neither for coal-fired power plant nor the nuclear power plant in the Balkan region yeah. for a longer term. Uh, but whether they like the 25 euro or not, Demand is the ultimate decision maker yeah. at the end of the day. And, and demand when, is... Do you think that will go up again? Well, I know it's very difficult to do uh, predictions, but, but how do you see the future? What are your expectations? Will it ever be uh, business as usual again or will, uh, will there be a change in, in energy trading? 
uh, to get the right answer, you must ask yourself as a private, mm -hmm. do you want to buy a zero euro ticket around the world, get your family and visit a restaurant now, today, tomorrow, immediately, or you wait, or patiently wait and uh, experience the unfoldings in the next two, three months. I am belonging to the more conservative, I would yeah. say, sorry, the more intelligent part of the mm -hmm. citizens. So yeah. we can, if it's not guaranteed, but we can certainly state that I think that 40, 50% of the people in Europe will be more cautious. Yeah, to, I think probably more, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah. Uh, again, to predict anything is difficult, but, um, but people, people got fur, people is scary. And, uh, and we, we all have some uh, personal experience in our neighborhood from the COVID, uh, closer or, or, or farer, in maybe in the family or in the, in, in the friendship. So it's not just a financial problem as, you, as 2008 used mm -hmm. to be. Yeah. It's, a little, it's a little bit more. So yeah. there will be always people who do not care about anything, financial, mm -hmm. health, technical, they're gonna travel. They will go to Croatia, Montenegro, Madeira, whatever yeah. uh, places. But I think that, and especially the aviation sector, if you, if you read the news about the Lufthansa mm -hmm. uh, yeah. annual assembly of yesterday, so it's really serious, I think. Uh, so this is also a very bearish uh, factor uh, uh, regarding the CO2 emission. Uh, so, again, 40-50% of the people in Europe uh, will be more uh, conservative yeah. To, yeah. Uh, to cross the borders, to, to make, to travel big distances this, this year, including the Q4. <clears throat> okay. I think, I'm, I'm sure viewers will have many more questions for you. Um, you're, you will also be joining uh, our webinar on uh, the 9th of June on energy price drivers. So we'll definitely uh, continue the conversation uh, on, the, on the 9th of June. Um, if you want to join the webinar um, with Joseph and others, uh, go to uh, energytradingcsee.com and you will find uh, more details uh, how to join over there. Uh, Joseph, I wanted to thank you uh, for this talk. Um, stay safe and, uh, and talk to you soon.